Hey, my name is Kara. I'm an ultrasound tech, and let's talk today about some of the things that can affect the quality and basically the quality of images during the ultrasound scan that you have. Now, I am talking more towards obstetrical scans, but this can obviously apply to any sort of general ultrasound scan as well. So first thing that I want to talk about is maternal body habitus. So I want you to think about ultrasound being essentially just sound waves coming out of the probe, which that's exactly what it is. But if you think of these sound waves as coming out and then hitting the structure that we are trying to look at, and then from there, they're going to bounce back to the machine. And then that is when the machine basically processes these sound waves, and then it creates an image out of them. If the structure is farther away, then we will have a harder time getting those nice, crisp, clear sound waves back. So you can imagine this as someone standing, let's say, five feet away from you, and you are trying to yell something at them versus someone who is standing 15 feet away from you. Obviously, they're going to have a harder time hearing you, which is going to be the exact same concept that we are going to apply to the ultrasound and the image that we are getting. If there is an increased body habitus or basically just more fat, tissue, skin, etc. between the camera and the organ of interest or what we are trying to see, then we are going to get worse pictures or basically the pictures are going to be as clear in general anyways than if we had less distance between the ultrasound camera and the structure of interest. Now the second thing is tech experience is going to play a lot into it as well. So obviously, when we go through school, we are going through a lot of practical knowledge as well as the didactic knowledge. But with the practical knowledge and the scanning, you have to understand that this is all very, very tech dependent. And every scan that you're going to get based on the person is also going to be very different. The techs that have been scanning for a longer time, generally, we are able to get better windows quicker, at least, than those who have not been scanning for as long. And we also know basically what angles to use and what settings or basically just what positions that we can use to get a better image on the patient. So oftentimes, if you are being scanned by someone who is newer, the pictures can be a little bit less optimal than if you were being scanned by someone who is more experienced. And to take this in an extreme case, I know that one of my followers who is an ultrasound tech herself in the States, she did state that there is a difference in the states between an ultrasound technologist and a technician, I believe is what she said. Essentially, one takes like two years, the other one actually is like a four-year degree. And she was saying that at one of the hospitals that she used to work at, the people that were doing the nuchal translucency tests, which you do need special training for, and it's basically another course on top of your training that you do as an ultrasound tech, that some of those people were not even qualified to do those nuchal tests, which is crazy to me. But if you think about it, it's not basically just like um, an MRI or other imaging where you can just go ahead and mostly let the machine do all the work for you. With ultrasound, if you are not getting those structures right on with what you should be, or if you are not moving the camera as you should be, etc., you are really not going to get the best pictures that you can be. And anomalies, unfortunately, can be missed very easily if you do not have the experience or basically even the know-how to angle the camera in a certain way, or if you're simply just not thinking about that abnormality and you don't look for it. An example of this could be something like checking that the foot is coming off the ankle at a 90 degree. If you are not being taught to check for that regularly in a routine exam, you may blow past that. So basically you may blow past it if baby has a club foot and you were not aware that that is something that you should be looking for. We are essentially the machine. We are the thing that is responsible to be able to find these abnormalities. So if you are getting someone who is not experienced or they don't really know what they are doing, you are not only going to be getting poor quality images, but you may also be missing really important abnormalities. Also, I think this is basically just generalized across all imaging modalities, but the new machines do penetrate the tissue better as well as in general they do produce better quality images so if you are going somewhere who has old machines or basically just old technology 
again, you may not be getting the best scan as you would if you went to somewhere who is using the new machines. And we do see this a lot. I mean, kind of an obstetrical ultrasound when I am scanning at the clinic where I am at, where we can use obviously more like 3D pictures and um, more of that advanced technology to clear up abnormalities on our newer machines. But I can especially attest to this in the new echo machines that we have gotten at our clinic. So we did get one new echo machine. I believe it's been about six months now. And the image quality is so much better than on our old echo machine. Like there is a major difference. So this basically applies kind of across the board. If you're going to a place with old machines, then your pictures basically may not be as good as in they probably aren't going to be as good as somewhere who is keeping up to date on the technology and is doing those updates when they should. Another thing that could affect the image quality in obstetrical ultrasounds especially is baby's positioning. You can be basically the thinnest person with basically no body fat on you, so essentially the sound wave should travel through you really, really nicely. But if baby's head is down really low, or if it's in just a really bad position where we can't see all the structures and it refuses to move, we are obviously not going to be able to get all the structures that day, and then we are going to have to rebook. So sometimes, even if you are a perfect candidate for scanning, if your baby is uncooperative, then we're not really going to get all of the pictures. This can especially be applied for in the anatomy scan that we do. So the one around 20 weeks where we take between 100 and 120 pictures on average. That is the scan also where you can find out gender, but mostly for the scan when it says the anatomy scan, it's basically just implied in the name that we are looking at all of baby's anatomy. And you can imagine that not only do we need baby flat on its back, we also need it on its tummy, we need it on its side too. Basically just rolling around all over the place is kind of the best thing that can happen with baby during that scan so that we can actually get all of the structures. An example of this is if we are trying to see baby's spine, then we are having to look at multiple things, such as making sure that the spine is equally spaced apart. We have to make sure that there are like the three spinous processes. We have to make sure that there is no defect in the skid line, etc. So you can imagine if baby is just laying flat on its back and our camera is on top of mom, basically on her belly, we are not going to be able to see all these structures when essentially baby is just laying chest up. So baby really does have to move during most of the scans that we do in order for us to get the pictures that we need. So again, if baby is not in a good spot, we are not going to get pictures. And the last thing I want to cover, which is kind of along the same lines as baby being in a bad position, is the farther along you get in the pregnancy, then in general, the worse the pictures are going to get. In your second trimester at your anatomy scan, that is when I would say that you would get your best picture, so that cute profile picture, and basically just baby still somewhat fitting on the screen, along with the fact that baby looks like a baby, yes, which is great. And also there is enough fluid for us to be able to see everything. When you progress into your third trimester and if you end up needing a scan in your third trimester because of like growth concerns or because of something that was seen in the anatomy scan that needs following up with, in the third trimester is where a lot of these factors like baby's positioning and basically just overall trying to get baby in a good position is going to degrade the image because not only is baby bigger in the third trimester, there is also just going to be naturally less amniotic fluid as you get closer to term, which then makes the images not as good for us. Essentially, the fluid provides a nice window for us to be able to highlight structures such as seeing baby's profile and seeing anything else on baby. So with that naturally decreasing fluid, the pictures aren't going to be as good because everything's kind of smushed in there. Baby's also not moving as much from the position that they are in because they're just bigger. And oftentimes they're not doing those big crazy movements and those barrel rolls like they are in the second trimester when they have more space. And also with things being much bigger, we can't fit as much on the screen. So basically just see as much at one time because again, baby is bigger. So we can essentially just fit like a head at a time on the screen and then just the chest or like just a foot on the screen which again, sometimes doesn't make for as nice of pictures. So I basically always warn parents when we are starting a third trimester scan that I probably won't be able to get as good of pictures as in the anatomy scan simply because of all the factors that I just described. But of course, we still try and get those cute profile pictures. 
You can get a really nice nose lips picture usually in the third trimester that highlights those chubby cheeks and then the little button nose and the nose lips, which is really cute. And oftentimes that actually looks better than the second trimester because there's actually fat on baby in the third trimester. So basically looks a little bit less skeletal. Anyways, hopefully this video has been helpful in clearing up why the ultrasound images may not be as good as you were expecting and essentially just the factors that could contribute to affecting the ultrasound images and the image quality. Like usual, if you guys have found this helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you do like a shorter format kind of video, I do make TikTok videos as well, so check me out over there too.